Okay, so the, this, uh, we'll start with the easy way of doing this. Uh, here we've got the function, well the function f of x is 2x cubed plus 4. And we're supposed to evaluate the inverse of minus 50. Now if you think about what, what the inverse of a function means, that means kind of going the other way through it. So the inverse of minus 50 is another way of saying find the, find the x value that gives you an answer of minus 50. Because it's, it's, it's good doing it backwards, isn't it? So the easy way of doing this question was not to find the inverse of f. It was just to say that means solve the equation 2x cubed plus 4 equals minus 50. Which is a fairly straightforward equation. 2x cubed is minus 54. x cubed is minus 27, which makes us feel very happy that things are all working out because x is minus 3. There you go, two marks. Dead easy. Of course, what almost everybody did is they saw the inverse of f and thought, yikes, I better find the inverse of f. So they said y equals 2x cubed plus 4. Let's rearrange it. y minus 4 is 2x cubed. <laughs> y minus 4 over 2 is x cubed, so x is the cube root of y minus 4 over 2, which means that the inverse of f is the cube root of x minus 4 over 2. So if I do it for minus 50, I'm going to get the cube root of minus 50 minus 4 divided by 2 which, as we can see, is, is the same calculation we've just done. Minus 54 over 2 is minus 27, which is minus 3. But that's quite a lot more work, quite a lot more space to make a mistake, as in what a few people did, which was get the 2 outside of that cube root sign by undoing this in the wrong order. And that was a bit of a problem. So that was that. Um, part 2 show that f of g of x is 2x minus 16. Uh, so remember f of g of x is going to be what you get if you do f of g of x, which is the cube root of x minus 10. <coughs> now f was... 2x cubed plus 4, so that is 2 times that cubed, well that's just x minus 10, plus 4. That's right, isn't it? Okay, and we, we have to see, we have to see pretty much at least that those steps happening. They, for a question that was showing something like this, it, you generally had to see at least two steps rather than just arriving at the answer. But there we go, we've got 2x minus 16. That's the answer that's required. Um, part 3 said, differentiate g of f of x with respect to x. Well, this, there's a few more marks, three more marks, three marks for this one. We do need to work this out, don't we, if we're going to do it. So g of f of x is g of... 2x cubed plus 4, which means we're now dealing with the cube root of 2x cubed plus 4 minus 10, because that's what the expression is, uh, which gives us 2x cubed minus 6 to the third. And I'm afraid that was just one mark for getting to that point. Now the question said differentiate it, find, yeah, differentiate G of F. Um, it's a chain rule, isn't it? It's the, the big bear, little bear, as we sometimes refer to it. So the derivative of, of that, uh, what, what can we call that? Oops, I'm going to change colour. That would be the big bear, would be a third of all of that, to the 1 of the power makes it minus 2 thirds. 
and we're going to multiply by the derivative of the inside bit, the little pair, which would be the derivative of the inside that is 6x squared. And for the final mark, it has to be simplified. A third of 6 is 2, so we've got 2x squared, 2x cubed minus 6, to the minus 2 thirds. And it all had to be in there. It was really easy to kind of miss a bit off. So quite a few people missed off the square there, or, or missed off the minus sign in front of the power. It had to be all correct to get that, uh, those two marks for that. There we go.